Welcome to The Rusted Garden. Today is April 9th and this is the fourth video in my Do It Yourself series for 2018 and we are talking about different garden recipes that you can make and use in your garden. And the uh, third video is really on the soaps, how to select the right soap. And today we're going to talk about neem oil, how do you use it in your garden, what's a good recipe to use, and we're also going to talk about other oils. Even though that says olive oil, let's pretend that says vegetable oil because you can make a good smothering spray out of vegetable oil. Of course you could use olive oil but it's a little bit more expensive so we're going to pretend that's vegetable oil. Now we'll get to neem oil in a second. Any oil that you use at your table in the kitchen can be used as a smothering spray and basically it's oil, it covers the soft bodied insect, it smothers, smothers them, they die. It doesn't do anything chemically to them um, my understanding is if it does get sprayed on eggs, it can get into the eggs and you know mess up how they really work and it dies. But it's not a chemical process. It's a smothering process. So it's very safe to use in your garden. You just want to make sure that you don't overuse the amount of soap and oils in the spray because once you spray a leaf with too much oil, too much soap, combination of both, you can damage the plant. So. You're going to hear me say this over and over again in all the DIY recipe series um, for this year. Test spray any new spray on your vegetable garden. So that means you go and you find a couple of leaves of the plant you're going to treat, spray it with the recipe that you made, wait 48 hours, look for damage. If there's no damage, you're good to go. But it is on you to really test spray the things that you make. And check out I'll actually link in the Do It Yourself series playlist and you can watch the one about the soaps because I talk more about how sprays can damage your plants. I don't want to go over that again because I don't want to waste your time. So smothering oil sprays, you can use those every 7 to 14 days to treat the soft bodied insects that come into your garden and you're basically going to coat them with a fine coat of oil. How's it work? It's pretty straightforward. We're going to use this container for uh, the neem oil. So let's pretend this is one gallon of water. I'm always recommending that you make a one gallon mix. You can make smaller mixes but then you're using teaspoons and then it, it can kind of get confusing because most of the time we're going to be filling up a one gallon sprayer and taking it out into our garden. The oil sprays can sit in here for a while so you get a good seven days once you make it even a little bit longer just keep it even refrigerated. It'll get thick but let it warm up and then you shake it again and the oil will disperse through. That's the key. When you make an oil spray you want to make sure you add in enough soap. Use the simplest soap that you can find, one that doesn't have a lot of other additives to it. And when you shake it, you want the oil to get dispersed through here. So when you spray your plants, you're covering the leaves with a fine layer of oil and you're covering the insects with a fine layer of oil. It's a pretty simple setup. You can use one to two tablespoons of oil per gallon of water. So we're going to go with one. Start with one. See how it works. If it doesn't seem to be working well, go to two. Always start with the lowest amount of the recipe and work your way up. Now, to this we want to add just enough oil, I mean, I'm sorry, just enough, I don't want that to stain the tablecloth, just enough soap that when we shake this in theory, the oil is going to disperse through here for a good 30 seconds, closer to a minute. That's enough time to shake it spray your plant, go to the next, next plant, shake it and spray it. And we're trying to use as little oil as possible. So put in a little bit, give it a mix, or we would be shaking that container. I'm going to do this with the neem oil, but you'll get the idea. And you can see the water changes because oil is starting to get mixed into there. Let it sit for a second. And it's coming up in much smaller beads, but it's still coming up to the top, so too quickly. So we add in a little bit more soap to the mix, and pretty quickly that is now mixing through the entire thing of water. And that's all you really do to make your oil sprays, your smothering oil sprays. One to two tablespoons in a gallon of water, 
put in enough soap so that when you shake it, you see the oil get dispersed through here. The oil stays dispersed for 30 seconds to a minute. Spray your plants. You want to use this really probably every 7 to 14 days until the infestation is under control. Now, you can also use oil sprays as a fungicide. Now, I, I haven't personally used the vegetable oils for fungicide. I use the neem oil, so I'll talk about that too. But oil has two benefits to the garden. It can smother soft-bodied insects and it can help manage powdery mildew and other diseases like that in your garden. All right, so now neem oil, I sell on my vegetable garden um, seed and, and garden shop if you want to check it out. If you don't buy it from me, make sure wherever you buy it, it's 100% cold pressed neem oil with azadiractin in it. Now the azadiractin is a chemical only found in neem, in the neem oil. When it's sprayed onto a leaf, it dries, it sits there. Your good insects can walk on it. Your bees can walk on it. It's not going to damage them. It only damages chewing insects. So when they chew the leaf, they ingest the neem oil, they ingest the azadiractin. It messes up their gut, shuts down their system. In a couple of days, it dies. It's extremely effective. I've been using it for years for chewing insects, and I do recommend it. Now, when you go to the store, you're going to see all kinds of products, and you can check out the linked playlist about neem oil. I will explain it in depth. If you see a neem oil product that says hydrophobic extract of neem oil, don't buy it. It's garbage. It's no better than your vegetable oil or your olive oil. They, for some reason, will remove the azadiractin out. They sell it as neem oil, but you're just getting a smothering oil just like your vegetable oil or your olive oil. It, you want the cold press, you want the azadiractin, so wherever you buy it, make sure it has those components. Now this works extremely well when you see that psychotic white butterfly flying around and it lays eggs on your green leafy vegetables, your broccoli, your uh, cauliflower, your kales, all those plants. That's the green cabbage looper. It's laying eggs, you're gonna get those crawling green worms that just chew down your plants. This is 100% effective. You're going to use one again, one to two tablespoons of neem oil per gallon. You're going to use a sprayer to spray it on, but I like to make it this way. Neem oil can stay about a week in here. And let's go with two tablespoons. Now, like I said, you can check out the video that was done before this one that talked about the soap. But basically, when you spray plants in the spring when it's cool, they can take much more uh, of the oils and products going onto their leaves. It's cool, the leaves are nice and firm. When the heat comes, you notice that a lot of your leaves droop. When the leaves droop and you hit them with something maybe you were using when it was cooler weather, because the leaf is drooped now, what you used before in the spring that didn't harm your plants can harm your plants in the summer, later spring when it's warmer. So you really do have to test spray and know your product. All right, you can see that the neem is floating. If we were going to put this, if this was a sprayer, one gallon, and you shake it up, you see that it's all beaded. It's floating right back to the top. The sprayer feeds from the bottom. You're not gonna get an even coat of neem oil on your leafy plants. It just doesn't work. That's why we use the soap. So we start with a good pour. The amount of soap is going to vary depending on what brand you're using. Give it a shake, see what it does. And it's pretty quickly getting to the top and it hasn't been 30 seconds. Now if you watch video three, you can see that you could put up to two tablespoons of this oil in here. Um, you can start with two tablespoons and go up to four tablespoons. But we don't want four tablespoons in there. We want the minimum amount of soap that really disperses this 
through the liquid. And we're starting to get there. You can see that it's staying through. See a little bit floating back here. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. We probably didn't even get to a tablespoon, maybe a little bit past. And then once you get used to the soap you're using, you know how to make your recipe and that is well dispersed. That's how you set up neem oil. One to two tablespoons per gallon of water. Add in enough soap. We're all going to be using different brands until it's dispersed and that's sitting through there nicely. Every time we go to a plant, we would shake it again, spray the top of the leaf, spray the bottom of the leaf. You can even spray the ground with neem oil. And you want to do that, the, um, well, if you see an infest, in, in infestation, certainly spray it when you see it. You want to spray again in about five to seven days, and you want to spray again after that in about five to seven days, and you want to spray one more time after that. The reason you're doing that, and you could go every five days if you want, um, every seven days if you want, the reason that you're spraying it at least once a week is because you're going to have hatching eggs, you're going to have insects coming from other places. You want to be sure you kill down the whole life cycle of the insect that you're going after and then it will get rid of it. Now with the green cabbage looper you're kind of starting when you see that first moth come. Spray every 7 to 14 days. You don't have to soak the plants down. Just cover the tops, cover the bottoms. The neem oil is really effective and you just spray it and that was, you know, a good minute. Shake it again, it disperses through. Just spray it, you know, lightly, top of the leaves, bottom of the leaves. Any eggs that are laid on there, the loopers will hatch, they'll chew it, they'll die. Every once in a while you'll catch the eggs coming in, but you'll really be able to control the population down. So a quick review. When you have an infestation, every five to seven days for three cycles to kill out that population that is there. If you're doing it preventatively every 7 to 14 days just to keep the oil on the plants and you know prevent the insects from coming in. And if it rains hard you'll want to replace the spray sooner maybe closer to that week time or 10 days. But remember it's on the bottom of the leaves so you don't have to go crazy and you know do this every week um, you know to keep pests off of your plants. You can just give it a spray let it go 7 to 14 days and it's really really effective. That's how I use neem oil in my garden. It is also effective, like some of the most of the oils, at stopping um, powdery mildew, um, I think black spot on roses, any of your fungal diseases. What it does is the fine oil covers the spores, covers the fungus on the leaves, and prevents them from doing their thing and spreading. The oils will just kind of coat them. The neem oil, in my opinion, also coats them, stops the uh, fungus from spreading and get it, getting started, but I think it's got some other qualities in there because it's really effective at stopping powdery mildew on your cucumbers, on your squashes, even when the outbreak starts. So I highly recommend neem oil for your garden. So this is how you use oils to make smothering sprays, um, fungicides, and this is how you use neem oil to stop chewing insects. In the next video, I'm going to talk about peppermint oil. I'm going to be talking about how to use aspirins on tomatoes to trick the plant because this mimics a hormone in the tomato to beef up its defenses. And I'm also going to, I've actually just uh, ordered rosemary oil and orange oil. So I'm going to talk about how you use these scented oils in your garden. And basically what peppermint oil does is it um, masks the scents of your squash plants, your different plants. It's harder for bugs to find them. It's really, really effective. I was using it all last year. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my YouTube channel um, and, a, and subscribe because this is going to be a 15-part series of all kinds of recipes. And also check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.